day two of the 44 Cup 2024 World Championships in Brunnen, and it's been a slow start. With the Lake Lucerne and Mirror Flat and teams held ashore, the race committee have gone out on the water to wait for the wind to fill in. Now, let's catch up with the teams on the race course. Race four in Brunnen. The start for Black Star is great in the middle of the line there, launching off the start line. The Swiss team will be really pleased with that. But again, Nicker on this end has had a good start too. The fleet spreads out, some going to the right-hand side of the picture here, searching for more wind like there was yesterday. And as they come to the top mark now, they've got a slender margin from the guys who came out of the left-hand side of the beat. Boats are very, very congested here. Lots of boats all rounding the inner limit mark at the same time. And that just gives Nicker here a little advantage because they're gonna round, be clear, and able to get off and away on the downwind leg. It's a slightly slow because they were tight on the ley line here for Nika, but the kite's going up fast and the kite's setting already. They're already off and launched going downwind. The next few boats round, fighting hard to get that massive spinnaker up in the sky whilst also keeping the boat at speed. And as the boats all turn down, they're really looking to try and sail into the next darker patches on the water, which you might be able to see from this picture here. It's all about trying to sail in the most breeze. Oh, but look, Charisma have had a penalty. They're having to do a penalty turn of an, because of an infringement on the approach to the Wimmer Mark. And that gives their opposition a chance to start sailing away. All the boats like sailing off this Wimmer Mark on starboard jibe because there's been quite a shift to allow that to be favored. And as they come down the run here, you can see from this picture that the valley that the wind's blowing down is really constricting the wind and giving little puffs and patches here and there. Most of the fleet have decided that it's best to go towards the far shore over on the far side of this picture. They're trying to get down into the lured gate on one angle. It's the team coming in from Nika who've done a good job. They're still leading, they've got quite a margin now as they come into the lured mark. Dropping the spinnaker nice and early so they're well prepared for coming upwind into the next leg. Crests on the water now, they'll be looking, the tactician will be looking hard upwind to see where the next bit of wind is. But they've had a little bit of a funny drop again. There are people up on the bow trying to pull the spinnaker into the hatch. A little bit time tidy but they get round and their exit towards them past the mark is okay. Meanwhile, Aleph rounding the lured mark on the other gate mark in second. They're going out to the left-hand side of the course looking upwind towards those big cliffs where they're hoping for more wind. Third round is Peninsula and fourth, the Calero Marinas team from Spain doing a great job. Fifth is Ceref and they're gonna come round and come out of this starboard rounding mark. Up the beat, there's been a big change. Ceref, who rounded fifth at the bottom, are now leading, having taken a good advantage up the left side. And they come to the top here, big dump of the mainsails will allow the boat to turn down. The spinnaker's going up, the jib's coming down, and the boat's on angle, set and going and rumbling downwind. Hot on their heels, though, is the nicotine. They've managed to keep in touch and third is Aleph, a good race for them and a, lots of effort going in now to get that spinnaker hoisted and get accelerating away from the Wimmer Mark. As the boats come round this mark now, they're trying to weigh up whether it's to stay on on starboard jibe or to jibe off and try and take a route down the shore as they look down this, down this valley. And generally this week, it's been about being towards a ashore of one side or the other because the wind seems to be funneling down there. Still lots of traffic as boats are rounding the wheel mark and oh, really close there. I think that was a touch on the mark from, from Artemis, potentially a penalty. Down into the bottom, it's CRF who's maintained their lead, coming in, jibing, coming into the finish to win the race from Nika in second and Aleph in third. A great rest. A great race for Ceref and Nika. 
putting them in good stead for the overall standings after this race four. A little jibe here from Aleph though. It's going to be super tight. Them and Blackstar. Probably Blackstar's going to come off the better out of this and Blackstar jibing to try and complete their jibe and then cross down through the finish line with a fast approaching Aleph into the line. Race five. Slight changing conditions, but still windy enough for all these boats to be sailing with a J2. And as they come off the line, it's Black Star who've been shut out of the starboard end. There's a pack of five boats down on the left hand side Peninsula, uh, Vader, the Sea Ref boat, and the Swiss, Swedish, all coming out of that right hand side of the picture now, heading towards the cliffs that you can see in the far distance. Hiking hard, tactician looking out of the boat, trying to check to see where the wind is. Also dodging some wind surfers and kite foilers who are whizzing up and down the lake. And as they come out of this start here, these three, four boats at the bottom end of the line are starting to show the wind's coming, turning right. They've done well out of this beat. At the top here, it's Sea Ref rounding just close to Peninsula. A laugh as we come into this boy. That's going to mean that both boats are a little bit slower, but that may give Sea Ref just enough to roll over the top of Peninsula as they go to hoist the spinnaker. Both teams go absolutely crazy on the sheets. Grinders pumping the handles to try and get that big white spinnaker flying super fast. And both boats setting sails, punching out of the, out of the women mark. But there they are, Team Nika, doing a solid and consistent job, nibbling away fighting through all the traffic. Lots and lots of traffic here. Lots of boats having tough boat on boat situations as the boats turn down and trying to accelerate downwind. And another penalty for Charisma. Not going so well for them today. That's the second penalty of the day. But they're gonna turn down now and try and poise that big spinnaker and link in with the race. As we come into the right hand corner of the run, looking downwind, there's a real dogfight going on here between Car Sea Ref and Peninsula. Sea Ref trying desperately to be able to get to jibe in front of, a, um, of Peninsula so they can take the port jibe into the Lured Gate. But Peninsula doing a good job of making sure that they're in control and holding on and being close to Sea Ref so they can't really uh, make that jibing maneuver. Peninsula gaining here and they gain and jibe and lead down on port into this lured gate. The leading boat drops, Sea Ref in second drops, and Nika still trying to push hard with their white spinner crop in third, want to try and make a gain. They're going to go around the other mark, but the first two boats, they kind of come around the mark to the left-hand side of your picture. Turning the boat around, John Bassadoni here, carefully eking all the speed out of his boat and turns up onto the upwind angle as is Igor Lahr on Sea Ref, really trying to eke out all the power and speed. And Sea Ref here, roll into attack straight out of the rounding, because they want to get onto the favored port tack, or at least clear of the dirty wind of the Baloo boat peninsula. But they're having to sail back through the fleet. Lots of disturbed air there, as all the boats coming downwind are coming to this lured gate. But as we come up the beat, it's been a little bit to and fro, the spectators are cheering loudly as Peninsula have the better hand going up this second beat of race five. And as they come round, they've got a good little margin on the boats behind. They're turning the boat down now and almost pointing at the lured marks where they're going to go towards the finish. So the kite's taking a little while to set here. The wind's down a little bit, getting a little bit more fickle. Slight change in angle here. It's been good to come in on starboard, starboard tack up into this top mark and Sea Ref in the grey boat here with the big Vader logo. They're going to have to uh, have to think about which way they're going to go because they've got a fast, fast closing boat, Nika, right behind them. These two in good shape for the overalls. So Artemis, they're rounding now. Spinnaker going up. Crew getting everything prepped trying to exit the mark with as much speed as possible. And as you can see, looking down here, there's shiny patches on the water and there's dark patches on the water. And the dark patches are where we want to sail and the shiny patches are really the ones to avoid. They're like the car parks. 
As we come down the bottom here, Nicker have, have overtaken CRF. Both of those two boats just jibing, and this is the last approach into the finish. Peninsula done a good job, nice and solid, nice and consistent, and they've made sure they've kept their margin of advantage all the way down this run. It's been tough though, because a lot of boats split and went different ways, but they're coming down nice and smoothly, nice and gently into the finish line to get their first race win of this regatta. That's gonna do a great job for them in the overall standings. So as we eke into the finish here, the wind's dropping a little bit, getting a little bit lighter. And as you can see, the boats are taking a little while longer to just get up to speed and carry. But good job from Peninsula, great race. Congratulations. John Bassadoni there punching the air in, in, in sign of victory from, from victory for their Peninsula team for the race. Well done team. Second is Nika, third is CREF, and fourth is Artemis. So it's race six. Some boats a little bit closer. The guys at the committee boat end are really up and punching hard there, and then the people in the middle as well. It's been a really tight start, this one. Already some boats really stepping forwards and others just stepping and falling back. But at the top, it's Artemis who's done the best. They've done a lovely job of sailing through the patches of pressure up the beat and weaving their way through the tricky little gusts that we've seen on this race course. Slight sticky moment there, kite not quite setting and it's stuck, there's a twist in it or something, the zip not opening and it has opened now, but now it's stuck, not all the way up. Oh, this is this disaster for them at the moment. Maybe they can recover it and get the boat going. Meanwhile, Sea Rev coming round in third They've, done, they've had a pretty solid beat here and the kite's going up well. So Artemis from Aqua. Aqua having a great race here. Then from C-Ref and then Nika. You know, C-Ref and Nika still having some really solid performances. Followed by the ex-world champ, the last world champion, Team Charisma, with Nico Poon steering there. They're desperate to have a really good one in this last race of the day try and take that wind that they come around the world I'm with down the course. As we come down the race course, it's dropped. The winds become much more fickle. As we can see, the big mountains behind starting to change how the thermal wind's blowing down the lake and all the different bits of wind that blow onto the shores are fighting for that energy as we get towards the end of the day. That's meaning that the wind's starting to die in some areas and still being in others. As we look up at the course here now, on the, on the far left of the picture now, there's a bit more wind. But as these boats are eking down into the gate, the wind's dropping. And as it's dropping, it's changing and turning. And the boats are having to do maneuvers in really light and dribbly conditions. Artemis here coming across on starboard. Aqua jibing to defend to come into this lured gate, trying to carry all the speed they can Meanwhile, out on the far side towards the, the cliffs, there's a boat that's coming in across on Port Chide, and that's Sea Ref, who've made a little gain on a little gust down there. Are they gonna get across the two boats that are on Star? But I think they are. That probably puts them into about third place. But as you can see, as the boats are just getting towards the marks here, they can't actually get the Spinnaker to fill. The wind's turned, it's died, and it's actually turned and come from in front of them. The sails aren't filling, but now they've got the jib up really early to be able to try and sail upwind towards this gate. And as that's happening, the guys from behind with the spinnakers up are still coming down with wind from behind. The boat on the far right here is coming in with probably seven or eight or even nine knots. The people in between the guys at the gate and then the guys coming from behind are trying to work out which side to go and Sea Ref there just jibed to go around the right hand mark as we look at the screen here. Is it gonna be the game from the people in the left hand side of the screen where it looks like the wind's dropping the most or is it gonna be a game for the people on the right hand of the screen nearer to the shore, nearer to the big cliffs where hopefully the wind's gonna stay for a little bit more. Right now it's anybody's guess and the guys, the tacticians and the strategists on the boat are desperately trying to help weave their path into their next leg so they can plot their way through the next little zephyrs of wind to carry these big powerful machines up the race course towards the next mark. But oh, the race officer has signaled an abandonment 
And that's it for race six, abandoned for the day. So after a very, very busy day on the water, two races, a third abandoned, let's hear from Adrian Stead, the tactician on Team C-Ref, for what his thoughts are of the day. Day two here in Brunnen, uh, some fantastic sailing on the lake. Today we had to wait a little bit for the wind to fill in, but uh, we got into two races and we're halfway through a third before the breeze finally shut down. But really challenging place to sail. Today we had probably 10 to 16 knots at times, uh, shifting around 20, 30 degrees. And then as it became a bit more unstable, just got a bit, uh, bit more extreme, but uh, no, it's good, really good. I think everyone's enjoying the challenge of sailing on this lake with the mountains around and uh, yeah, the class racing is as good as ever.